Hey folks, David from Default Sound here, and today I'm going to do a little tutorial on how you can pull some extra functionality out of your mod wheel within MainStage 3. Now, if you've been using MainStage for a while, you're probably pretty familiar with how to map the mod wheel to filter cutoff within plugins like ES2 and RetroSynth. You may have even experimented with uh, transforming the mappings of the mod wheel at the patch level to control things like channel strip volume, uh, miscellaneous effect sends, whatever you want to do. The problem is when you map something to the mod wheel at the patch level, you lose that filter cutoff functionality within plugins. So today I want to show you a way that you can have your cake and eat it too. I want to show you how you can both use your mod wheel signal at the patch level for filter cutoff within plugins and also control other parameters uh, using the MIDI modifier MIDI effect. So I'm going to turn over here and I'll show you how to do it. It's pretty simple. So you can see I've got a patch open here that I created. I'm using my template Sunday keys today just for demonstration's sake. But I've created just a simple patch with RetroSynth. So right now I've got a little filter cutoff mapped to RetroSynth. Pretty basic. Now if I were to go here and grab the mod wheel and map it to this, then I would be able to control the volume, but I would lose that great filter cutoff opening up as I bring the mod wheel up. So that's not good. So I'm going to remove this mapping real quick. Now, get this back to zero. So you can do one or the other, but you can't get both to do, or you can't get both at the same time. Here's where the MIDI modifier effect comes in. So you're going to go here to that channel strip and select MIDI effects. Sorry, keep hitting that note. MIDI effects, and you're going to go to modifier. Drag this over to the right window. Right there, so you can see it. All right, so this is what it does out of the gate. It's just the default settings kind of not really do anything for you. So what the MIDI modifier does is it takes an input event, which can be any MIDI data, and it reassigns it to a different MIDI CC. So right now it's taking velocity and it's assigning it to mod wheel, which isn't really doing anything for us. So what we want to do is take the input event and make that the mod wheel. And then we want to say reassign to, in this case, volume. Then you want to set the scale to 100. So now, when the mod wheel's down, the volume is reassigning to a volume of zero in MIDI. So we've got no volume. As we bring the mod wheel up, we get volume. Now you may notice that We've got it controlling the volume, but we don't have that filter cutoff opening up. So all you need to do is select through. That allows the input event to be both reassigned and passed through. So it's controlling both mod modulation within RetroSynth, which is opening that filter cutoff, and then it's also controlling the CC volume. That's all there is to it. It's pretty cool, all the stuff you can accomplish with this. So you could take your input event of the mod wheel and you could reassign it to any MIDI CC. Velocity, aftertouch, pitch bend, anything you want. You could assign it to something empty and go crazy if you were using something within like ES2 or whatever. So this adds a lot of functionality to your mod wheel and you don't lose the ability to open up that filter cutoff which is a really nice feature. Now I'm going to show you how to pull a little extra functionality out of this. I'm going to do this at the patch level so we've got this going. That's working nice. Let's say that we had multiple channel strips going and we had a sound that we only wanted to use on the chorus. So we could, you know, just bring the mod wheel up for the chorus. But let's say that during the verse we wanted to have a little bit of play of another layer with the filter cut off. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this channel strip so that the volume stays at zero until you get halfway up the mod wheel. So select your channel strip here you're going to go to the MIDI input tab and we're going to look in the controllers area right here so we have input we're going to select modulation for output we're going to select modulation this little section here is basically a, a, a smaller and simpler version of the MIDI modifier but I prefer to use the modifier because it offers more flexibility but for this this is exactly what we need because we can go in here and we can adjust the transform curve 
So we have input modulation, output modulation. Now we're going to transform it. So this represents the whole range of the modulation wheel sweep from zero all the way up to 127. So no volume, no filter cutoff, and then all full volume and that filter wide open. So all you have to do is just drag either point wherever you'd like it. So for now, I'm going to just take this to the middle. So now you can see as I move my mod wheel up, that that little dot stays down until we hit 64 and then it goes up. So that sounds like this. Now if you wanted to, you could invert that as well. So as you bring the mod wheel up, that sound fades out. So you can get smooth cross fades between two channel strip volumes doing this if you just did the same thing in reverse for another channel strip. It's a really useful tool, it takes like no CPU, all it's doing is transforming MIDI data. So I highly recommend that you familiarize yourself with this little tip, and I hope that it's been helpful to you. If you like this video, please like, comment, and share the video, that's a huge help. Subscribe if you're on YouTube, uh, like my Facebook page if you're on Facebook, and please do head over to defaultsound.com and join the Default Sound Insiders page on my website. When you do that, you get access to the main stage starter kit for absolutely free. It uh, contains everything that you need to sound your best and succeed within main stage. Tips and tricks, 30 free main stage patches, over $150 worth of value total, and I'm giving it away absolutely free for everyone who signs up to be a Default Sound Insider. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments or send me an email, info at defaultsound.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.